Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us. I'm Josh Freed, Vice President for the Climate and Energy Program at Third Way. I'm delighted to welcome you to a conversation on how a bold investment in America's clean energy workforce, done right, can build back a stronger U.S. economy. And no one in the U.S. Senate has made the case for this place-based investment better than our esteemed guest, the senior senator from New Mexico, Senator Martin Heinrich. Senator Heinrich, a member of the Senate Energy and Natural Resources Committee, is committed to supporting a strong clean energy economy while providing our energy veterans and making sure that domestic energy producers are given a fair shot in competitive global markets. The land of enchantment, as New Mexico is known, relies on revenues from fossil fuel jobs to fund education and critical social services. Communities in New Mexico, as well as Texas, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, and others, all of them remain in a precarious position as the clean energy transition moves increasingly into high gear, but also these communities face immense opportunities. We're gonna have a discussion with the Senator, and then following that, Pleased, we're pleased to welcome a panel of choice experts to discuss and disentangle exactly what we mean by clean energy infrastructure, what the jobs might look like, and describe how these investments in our future can benefit all Americans. And with that, I'm honored to bring Senator Heinrich into the discussion. Senator, welcome. Oh, it's great to be with you today. So the, let's kick off a little bit with some scene setting. Uh, the Biden-Harris administration and congressional Democrats just passed the American Rescue Plan. How do you talk about this really significant legislation with New Mexicans? Well, I talk a lot about the impacts on individual families. Uh, New Mexico has had a really hard year. Uh, impacts to small businesses and restaurants have been substantial. Impacts to children, uh, many of which who do not have broadband have been really concerning. And so, you know, just talking through the lens of something like the uh, enhanced child tax credit, this is literally the biggest investment in reducing child poverty in our state in many, many decades. And so it has the potential uh, to really jumpstart our economy again, get our kids back in, in school safely and and moving forward uh, once again. And so I try to drill down on the individual pieces and parts that are gonna make a big difference for my constituents. So with, um, with ARP just being passed, there's now, of course, in Washington, focus on what comes next. And there's a lot of talk um, about the next big congressional package being around infrastructure with major clean energy components a part of it. How would you like to see that legislation come together for New Mexico and, and for other Western states? Well, I think there will be a number of things that I'm going to be looking for. Um, you know, as we make this transition, I think it's critical that we invest in those communities that have been producing energy for a long time and help them through this transition. Uh, we also need to make smart investments and, and to the extent we can, technology neutral investments in a lot of different sectors. Uh, transmission is a great example of that. Um, a lot of the work that we're gonna do to clean up the grid is gonna require new transmission to uh, connect the places where we're gonna generate that, like in New Mexico, with the markets that are gonna purchase that. Most of the renewables that we have been developing in New Mexico, and we're developing billions of dollars worth of renewables, gigawatts of new wind and, and solar energy, that's not for New Mexico's consumption for the most part. We, we're only 2 million people, but those gigawatts are in huge demand in places like California or even Phoenix. So having the, the tran, um, transmission in place to make sure that we balance those things is gonna be really key. And energy storage is another place where we can really sort of supercharge this transition. Yeah, that's it's it's helpful and it's interesting to hear the symbiosis between New Mexico as a producer of energy and the other more populous parts of the country that may consume it. Um, one other challenge that we've started to hear more about is Republicans 
have been lukewarm at best around acting on infrastructure, even though we've heard about Infrastructure Week for many years. Um, what what might it take to get 10 Republicans on board for a package that is significant? You know, I, I don't wanna necessarily speak for my Republican colleagues, but you don't know if you don't ask and you don't listen. So I, I think it's incumbent upon the president and the White House, it's incumbent upon uh, those of us here in the Senate to, to be having those conversations with our colleagues to figure out where that common ground may be. And no matter what the eventual process for this is, the more bipartisan pieces and parts you can put in a package, the better your chances are of really building more of a bipartisan consensus and creating durability as well. Yeah, and, and the durability is, is certainly one key and we've seen how quickly things may change as administration shift. Um, and one question on that front, just uh, we noticed that um, you introduced a resolution of disapproval in the Senate today to cancel the Trump administration's harmful rollback of methane leakage protections. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that and, and uh, the purpose of that and why, why that's an important action to take now? You bet. Well, one, um, you know, methane is uh, when you have leaky infrastructure around oil and gas production and you're losing methane, you're also leaking all kinds of other things into the air that my constituents live in, work in, breathe. Um, so it's a, it's a very serious public health issue, uh, especially in the, the northwestern and southeastern parts of my state. In addition, it's a huge waste of a valuable resource. There's a reason why the, the best in class producers don't, uh, don't lose nearly as much methane uh, because they're, they're investing, they wanna keep that, that's their product, that's what they sell. So we wanna minimize waste as much as possible. And then it's a huge climate driver. I mean, this, this is obviously something that in the short term is many, many times more potent than CO2. So for all of those reasons, you know, the, the Trump administration rule was running counter to even what we were hearing from many of the, the industry leaders. Um, so it's just long past time that, that we set, you know, our nation as the world standard for making sure that we're not wasting resources and we're protecting public health. Yeah, it, and one of the things that builds off of that is you alluded to the oil and gas industry as one of the major employers in New Mexico, and how do you balance that in the critical role it plays as an employer, as a source of tax revenue, with the country and an economy that's really shifting towards clean energy? It, it's, a, it's a huge challenge. Uh, there's no way around that. And I think one of the things that I have tried to do differently is I've seen a lot of elected leaders over the years who built their careers on trying to uh, wish for a future that's not gonna happen and, and fight to maintain the past. And the reality here is that markets have made decisions about which direction we're gonna go. Things are gonna become less and less carbon intensive as a result. So I think the balance that I wanna strike is to respect the past and respect the workers and communities that have really done this work and produced uh, an economy and uh, you know reasonable, affordable energy for us. And at the same time, look for the opportunities to grow and diversify the future jobs and look for the opportunities to, to pivot, um, in, in particular, the, the oil and gas industry towards what the future of, it, of uh, energy might look like. And so, you know, in the last, six months to a year, I've really been doing a deep dive on the potential for the hydrogen economy. It's one of those places where the oil and gas engineering expertise, the, the skill set among our trained workers lines up almost one to one with what we're doing in oil and gas right now. And so that's a place where we're, we're trying to get more attention to US hydrogen production. How do you move from gray to 
blue to green or I actually don't like the color spectrum because there's a bunch of flavors in between those. <laughs> and, and how do you start that process so that we can both decarbonize the economy and keep people in good jobs? Yeah, we, we are thrilled to hear that and couldn't be in more agreement. And I think our next panel will even dive more into some of the issues around hydrogen and opportunities there. Um, one question, and I know you're going to unfortunately have to run in a couple minutes to vote. Um, you have an audience uh, for this uh, interview that's full of clean energy advocates. Is there something you'd advise the advocacy community do differently in how we talked about these issues, particularly uh, in the way that your constituents, that people in the oil and gas or other industries are hearing about it? Well, I think one, the clean energy advocates need to also speak to folks who have uh, who have jobs today or who had jobs in the not too distant past doing the other parts of, of the energy economy, producing coal, producing oil and gas, and meet them where they are because these people have done incredible work for our country. So that's one thing. Two, I would say embrace public health because so much about this transition is really rooted in healthier work environments, home environments. I mean, the truth is, we're starting to realize that combusting even natural gas inside our homes is a really bad idea, but people don't know that. We've never set standards for, you know, we don't have the same venting stand standards for a gas range that we, we have for a gas water heater or a furnace, and there's a reason why those things are vented. So I think public health and then just being really cognizant of the fact that economic transitions are hard. And we, we need to respect everyone's identity, work, life to make this as smooth as we can possibly make it. Well, that is a, a great place to end the conversation. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, Senator Heinrich. We really appreciated this and enjoyed your remarks and look forward to working with you in the future. Thank you uh, all. Appreciate it.